Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morrow, good whoever you are, whenever you are, wherever you are, ladies, gentlemen, children, and frying pans of all said ages, shalom, and welcome back to Purple's Planet. Today, we are going on an adventure. Ghost adventure. So today, of course, we're going to be talking about ghost adventures and the ever-present Zach Bagans. If you're not familiar with Zach Bagans, he's like a 90s boy band, steroid-filled, egotistical maniac who's obsessed with everything paranormal, but generally only the fakery that he can get away with. And he's very difficult to catch out, you see, because when you get into episodes of ghost adventures and everything else he's had anything to do with, nothing really ever happens that's too questionable. But this led me down a rabbit hole of thinking, well, how can we present evidence that Mr. Bagins has, has fucked with things, we will say, as well as letting people make their own mind up. So as per usual on our Fridays, there will be a, a serial of evidence presented before you and hopefully you will kind of be able to see into the mind of the way I see things and the way others see things and make your own mind up as whether you think is completely fake or whether he's real. We don't know, but there is a piece of footage coming up from, from a rabbi, in fact, <laughs> that are things rather Shut wonderful. Up. So whereabouts does this kind of, this journey start? And the simplest place I thought I would start was with one of the most popular investigations that ever took place in Ghost Adventures. Um, and when I say one of the most popular ones, I don't mean one of the most popular episodes, I mean one of the most popular places that I think he's visited. And of course, we are talking about the Stanley Hotel. Now, the great thing about the Stanley Hotel is also the worst thing about it, it has a lot of history down. And that history comes down the line and gets filtered through the internet and then programs like Ghost Adventures make up shit about it and it gets lost in the ether. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Stanley Hotel, it is a rather beautiful, rather large hotel that sits in Estes Park in Colorado. Now, this has been shrouded in, in mystery because of basically one person. You may have heard of this in passing, and this is all to do with a film called The Shining and Stephen King. But this is where we are to do our due diligence, you see? Because every ghost hunter that goes to this hotel comes out with the same outrageous claim. Right here is the most notorious door, maybe of any hotel in the United States. Room 217. This is the room right here that inspired horror master Stephen King to write The Shining. Here's Zach. And not only that, but Jim Carrey stayed in this room for three hours and couldn't stay in there, ran downstairs and had to get out of there. And what is the truth behind this? Well, there is none whatsoever. There are actually no records of Jim Carrey even ever staying at the Stanley Hotel. The story goes as such that every ghost hunter that goes here seems to twist and turn the tale just a little bit more. This is the hotel that inspired horror master Stephen King to write The Shining, in part because of how lonely and isolated one can get while up here in the mountains. But while he was here, he also experienced the ghosts firsthand in the room right behind me. When he checked into the hotel, he did actually write it, but there were no real paranormal experiences. He just had one bad dream about his son being chased through the corridor by a fire hose. He woke up sweating, lit a cigarette, and penned the outline for The Shining. That is where the connection goes. But there are other mysteries and, and things that are enshrined in all of this, which we can look into and really see that are complete and utter nonsense. There's the tale of the maid. And the tale of the maid just goes as such that she walked into a room one day, there was some kind of gas leak, she lit a candle, and there was a huge explosion. Now, depending on which paranormal investigator you are watching, you will get a 
different version of the story. If you watch Twin Paranormal, for example, they will tell you that there was a huge explosion, that she was blown up and then blown down the corridor. All right, guys, we are here in room 217, and apparently there's a maid who had, what, caught on fire? She came into this room in 1911. There was a gas leak and she exploded, but that didn't kill her. She survived, got flung all the way down to the lobby, worked here for like 40 more years until she died of natural causes. She is one of the main people that said to haunt this room. Let's examine. She caught on fire, then she exploded. Then she ended up down the corridor where she just ended up with two broken ankles. She's not Wily fucking Coyote. She was a maid. Basically, from the information that's available and the actual facts that's av that are available, she never died in the hotel. She worked at the hotel afterwards. There was an explosion. She suffered two broken ankles, and that was the extent of the injuries. She died in her bed somewhat 40 years later. Why she'd be haunting the hotel where she worked, nobody knows. Um, but there is another spirit, of course, who is known by the name of Lord Dunraven. Uh, Lord Dunraven was, uh, was one of the original people connected with the hotel. And his ghost haunts the room that he stayed. But what's amazing is if you do a little bit of research, Lord Dunraven unfortunately died many, many miles away in Limerick at a place called Adair Manor. And apparently he haunts that too and frequents it and refuses to leave this home. So therefore we are left with them even more of a pickling conundrum. But don't worry, this is not where things start to get crazy. You see, let's look a little bit closer at some of the claims Mr. Bagans makes. Now, one thing that separates the uh, carriage house from the Stanley Hotel is uh, not just how much creepier it is in here with all of these objects, but there's objects in here where some actual death happened, where the, the bodies were discovered on these beds. Yeah, we did have a recent death in the hotel. And after that happened, they did, of course, remove the mattresses from the room. And put them in here. Mm -hmm. Now, this claim is possibly one of my favorites because this is, the, this is the joyful one that somebody went to stay at said hotel, asked some of the people that run the ghost tours now about this comment and simply put, the hotel gets through a lot of mattresses. Part of the Ghost Adventures episode at the Stanley was the carriage house, because that's where the hotel stores all of the mattresses that people have died on. Can you guess what the tour guides told us? Yeah, none of that's true. Yeah, the hotel doesn't store mattresses that people died on like they're saving them for something. Save it? What would they be? What would they be saving them for? That's no, so funny. Um, we're an operating hotel, and believe it or not, we switch out mattresses every once in a while. And but Zach goes on to make some of the best comments you could possibly hear. Check out the ghost fish. Now during the time of the Stanley Hotel, a lot of the people here ate trout. And uh, they've actually said there's a lot of animal spirits here. So they just put a, just a piece of glass here. It looks like an aquarium, but it's just a you know clear piece of glass. What you just said. You can see the wall back there, it's just empty. And they say sometimes you can actually see the spirits of the trout that have been eaten here by the guests. That is right, as if the stretch of the hotel wasn't bad enough, Zach is now convinced that the trout that have been eaten in the hotel come back as ghost fish, which is one of the most insane things I think I've ever heard. But if you go back and watch through this episode, obviously I can't show too much of the episode because it goes straight into demonetization scale because Zach does not like people showing his episodes on YouTube. You see, the problem that we have is is not just with Zach Bagans, but Zach Bagans allows us to take this, this launch down the hole that every investigator that's gone to this place has only come back with with the stories that they can find on the internet. And unfortunately, the more of them that go and the more of them that embellish these stories the more the stories seem to take over the internet and the truth gets buried but if you look hard enough you can find some of the truths take this piece of information here that zach, zach talks about a man that was crushed in a tunnel right here is the tail end of a tunnel that used to connect this main building wow to the employee dorms which are uh -huh. back behind the hotel we do get quite a bit of snow um and so back in the old days it was just too hard to get the stuff back and forth yeah. and there was a workman in the tunnel bringing something through and the tunnel just caved in 
only certain spirits are trapped. Right. And this guy would fall into that category of being a trapped spirit because at that exact moment, all he was doing was working, trying to lug this food over, and then boom. Tunnel crushing incident. You, you look into and you can only really find connections to do with ghost adventures and anybody that went there afterwards to recycle this story. But if you track it back far enough, um, you find a story of it was a golden retriever going through the tunnels, you find the story of it was a girl going through the tunnels, it all just gets a little bit convoluted. But I think that this episode, for me, really, really quite triggered me just because of one very certain part. Not only does it come across as creepy and obscure, I think you just need to, to watch what I'm talking about here. Interview um, has a gift, can actually see ghosts, communicate with them and um, has had this gift at a, since a very young age. And uh, this person um, actually is down here. This is Bailey. Bailey, you've been coming to the Stanley Hotel for a little while, haven't you? Yeah. So how long have you known about this, this gift? Ever since I was just really, really little, I could see stuff and then I started being able to communicate with that. Now, do you, do you ever get scared from this? And sometimes they come to me for help and sometimes they have been like murdered or have murdered people. And so you know when they come into your room at night, it's not exactly the most comfortable thing ever. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I've had visitors in my room too that I didn't invite. They'll just come at the most random times, won't they? What are some things that you've experienced here? This little girl, she likes to hang out with me. Do you know what her name is, or Katie? The first time that I was ever here, I was laying in bed and I felt like someone was tickling my feet. My hand was kind of over the edge of the bed and it felt like something was willing my hand, just like warm and just like you would hand. So, you know, I thought it was my mom. And so then I rolled over and the warmth was gone. There was no weight of a hand there anymore. So I figured that was Katie too. Do you, some of your friends here, Rich, think you're kind of, you know, do they think it's kind of spooky or anything like that? That that you like ghosts? Because some some of my friends think I'm kind of spooky. I don't think any of my friends know. Really? Ooh. Here now on Ghost Adventures Dateline. I don't think it's healthy to be encouraging a girl of this age to kind of maybe be fed into what is essentially a delusion because if you look at it close enough and take into account this film came out in 2010 and the film The Sixth Sense came out in 1999, this girl is pretty much just describing the plot line of The Sixth Sense. Um, this gets a bit weirder as things go on to the episode, you just don't want anything to do with it. People are often saying, well, you can't say that Zach Bagans is a fraud or a fake or whatnot. Well, surprise, surprise, I have something to show you. Just a little bit of something that I think you might find a little tiny bit interesting. This was a very difficult clip to, to come by, but I managed to get hold of it. And it comes back from a uh, live episode. And I want you to watch this clip and this interaction between Zach and a rabbi. Um, can I ask you a question, Rabbi? Yes. Are you familiar with the Dybbuk or Dybbuk box? I read up on it today because <laughs> of the box. I read up on it. Okay. Is this... Are there demonic possessions in... in... Uh, not that much that I don't believe that it really could have... Could, that they could take control of you that I would be concerned about. It. All right. So uh, that may not be good with your script, but not, that's my personal belief. Okay, let's, um, let's go over here. So let's just take into account there that he asks him about the Dybbuk box, and the rabbi says, I only found out about it today when you gave me a script. And then Zach goes on to talk about the demons. And then the rabbi then responds, I don't think that's going to work for your script. It is a scripted ghost hunt. Everything is nonsense herein. But you have to look at the evidence that presents itself. They're, they're, they've got this 
they, they've got this this walk around they've got you know zach's feeling a presence from these mattresses where people have died nobody's died there they sell a story they're talking about the presence of the maid as if she was brutally injured and that's why her spirit stayed there afterwards i fell down a hill once and broke my wrist i'm not going to go back and haunt it when I die, I will haunt my wife, because that's the kind of thing I'll do, and I'll just move things around, just just to be a little shit. But it's all part of selling the story, and nothing really happens. There's a couple of EVPs, and of course, they just make a sound and then put some random nonsensical words over. One of them I thought was quite funny, because Zach Bagans is like, I was fast asleep, and you can just see him texting in his bed. So he's like, I was fast asleep, and then you hear this, this word, and look what it says woken up by an unexplained noise, and shortly after that, my digital recorder captured an EVP. Who's there? Who's over there? Shut that door. Shut this door. We all know what Zacky Boy was watching, don't we? Probably Jeff Cavalier on YouTube and pulling his plonker. But my point around all this is is simply, again, like when we looked at the Proving Demons videos, there is this abundance of factual bullshit that doesn't exist and choose to sell a story. And then that then gets recycled and recycled and recycled and it creates this myth to the point now where the Stanley Hotel is is kind of, it, it built, its entire booking reputation is now built around the fact that it's haunted. They have their own haunted guides now and the haunted guides do and have openly admitted that they do play a few tricks on guests here and there and paranormal investigators with some long twigs hitting them against windows. What I do know though is that while we were getting this tour, there were at least one or two other tour guides that were following us and trying to prank us the entire time by tapping on the windows of the rooms we were in with sticks. Cause, cause I remember one day it was like completely drained. Who's there? I guess that's just kind of like a fun little thing they do there. A fun little hazing designed to, I don't know, make me poop, shit my pants. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of hazing, except for when there is. And the whole point behind this is whether it's Sam and Colby, Twin Paranormal, or Ghost, Ghost Adventures, they've all taken the same tales and they've all communicated with the same spirits, some of which never died there, don't reside there, and are said to haunt completely different places where they don't even leave according to the psychics that have been to this place so it's just it's just all part of this of this theater this theater of creativity where in some respects you kind of have to you have to respect it the one thing we can say about Zach Bagans is he does invest in himself and in the paranormal he's got his museum he's bought these haunted cars and he invests so much money in and he's very, very clever to not go to the point where obviously the, the YouTube fakers do, but we do get some nonsense here, there and everywhere. And it seems to just be all spun in the drama and the tale. And and many places follow suit, but Zach does it with such a theatre that, that it becomes entirely more watchable, you see. And it's more... I don't know how it's... It's got some kind of... It's got some kind of pull to it, which seems to pull people in, and people are saying, well, proof is fake. And the point is, unless you take the facts like this and really look into some places and look beyond the bullshit, which takes some digging, then it's very difficult to say he's faking this. But if we now take into account the final moments and look at the people that didn't die there, the non-haunted rooms, the fact that Stephen King didn't see a ghost there, nothing really has ever happened. It's just a completely normal hotel. This entire episode is 35 minutes of a story being sold, two bruffles of bedsheets that are turned into EVPs, some flies, a moth, and nothing else, but still goes down as one of the most important episodes in their history. That should tell you an awful lot whether this helps you to decide whether it's fake or real 
or you agree with me that it is just one theatrical production but I just wanted to to kind of go through this little deep dive and have a look into the details and see what kind of adventures Zach went on and now next time you see somebody investigating the Stanley Hotel online just look at the details a little bit closer and maybe then realize why so many people are now starting to investigate houses that have no history they make up a name for them like the uk amityville house it's not an amityville house what all happened there it's just a house we give them a name and once they've got a name then we can create the past and the history for them and what happens when you go to look at said past and history there is nothing so nothing is verifiable so we can't call these people fake it's just one of those nonsensical things. Really look into the screaming house that myself and the Ouija brothers visited. Nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? If you go back a little bit further than some of the some of the more recent stories, you may find that that wasn't even the poor girl's auntie's house. The auntie's house may have been a few doors down, which then gives us the question: Well, how many? How did all those paranormal investigators manage to contact the dead girl? You went to a little secret. They didn't. And on that, ladies and gentlemen, I say unto you, take care of yourselves. And if you can't take care of yourselves, take care of anybody else. Because that, my friends, is human. I bid you adieu.